Afrique Média. Le monde, c'est nous. Thanks for joining us this afternoon on the Pan African Television Afrique Media. Uh, we're always pleased to have you, and this afternoon we are privileged again to. We're pleased to always have you, and uh, of course, today on the program we're looking at Cameroon and the recent increase uh, in the price of fuel and its impact on the economy. And it should be noted that Cameroonians began the first day of February uh, 2023 with a fuel price rise of about 15%, meaning a liter of diesel now costs uh, the sum of, uh, uh, of course, uh, the liter of fuel used to cost 575 CFA francs will now cost up to 720 CFA francs. And equally, the rise came after the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, uh, had put pressure on the government to cut its subsidy on the fuel. The price hike equally comes to add to an already existing unpleasant price hike on basic commodities uh, in the country. However, there will be a 5.2% increase on the civil servant salary, while equally five less than 5,000 francs equally is said to be uh, to have been added on the minimum wage in Cameroon. And of course, the question we're asking this afternoon is uh, Cameroonians going to cope with this recent price hike and what is going to be its impact on the economy? That's uh, a topic we're looking at. There's on the program. We invite you to join us. You can leave us your comments on our Facebook live page. Uh, the program is being streamed live on Facebook. We'll have your comments right here during the program. We are pleased to be joined this afternoon by uh, Dr. Ambi Valentine. He's a political an economic consultant. Doctor, it's a pleasure having you. It's a pleasure to be here again today. Good afternoon, Cameroonians. Good afternoon, Africans. And welcome to the Pan-African channel, African Media, where very important information are being dispensed to educate the society and help our nations of the world to better understand how things operate in the political, economic, and other spheres of life. Yeah, very important, the Pan-African Channel, Africa Media. Our interest is to look at many issues around the African continent, and we'll, we'll put an eye on Cameroon today. And uh, like we said, we're looking at the recent price hike on fuel, which is not the only concern. Equally basic commodities have equally uh, witnessed a price hike since uh, the beginning of the year 2023 in Cameroon. And this many are justifying with uh, the present war in Ukraine which is uh, what many justifies as the reason why prices of basic commodities as well as fuel is going up. Dr. Ambe Valentine, you are a political and economic consultant and we're looking at price hike on fuel in Cameroon, especially we had equally talked about the other price hike on other commodities, basic commodities. Now, uh, the price of fuel has gone up, was predicted by uh, economic watchers that we're definitely going to have an increase in the price of fuel. Now, uh, how was this news welcome and you as a uh, an economic consultant what does this mean to an economy like that of Cameroon yes Luis I was not taken by surprise when the price of uh, petroleum products increased in our country because I had earlier mentioned mm -hmm. that we are expecting a rise in petroleum products in this country yeah. before the news came up that's because we have a forecast of how things operate in the economic and political cycle in this continent africa mm -hmm. why wouldn't i know that things like that will happen in the nearby future i'm not speaking at that level as a soothsayer or a prophet i'm yeah. speaking as an analyst yeah. even though i'm a servant of god but analyzing how things operate in this continent you understand that definitely we're having into more mm -hmm. hike in prices in other commodities in the nearby future uh, when they keep laying blame on the Ukraine and the Russian crisis, I beg to disagree that because uh, Cameroon has been collecting debts from IMF for so many years and these debts were there before the Ukraine war started. Mm -hmm. And this indebtedness is what is pushing us to increase the price of basic commodities. Yeah, they say it's even a pressure from the IMF. It's a pressure from the IMF. That's why I told you that before this day, I had earlier mentioned in a 
a sister channel that prices of fuel product petroleum products will increase in the country on the continent because i know actually how things operate to begin with uh people don't understand what's the imf and they don't understand the purpose and the mission of the IMF. Yeah. I think I should be able to educate Africans on this. That exactly what many will want to hear. Yes. You know, IMF, uh, many <laughs> believe, comes to rescue uh, economies that are, are, are not performing well when yeah. pumping money. Many are satisfied with the fact that, okay, IMF has come in. So, what should we know about IMF? IMF is a brainchild of 44 countries in the year 1944 when the Great Depression took place in America from 1929 to 1939, 10 years. Within this period, you see the stock market crashed, the production of uh, industrial products also crashed, gross domestic product also crashed within that period. And then in 1937-38, there was a recession. After this period, there was a very, very it was a very difficult time for Europe and America. Now, in 1944, 44 countries came together for the purpose of setting up an international monetary fund which purpose was to help manage and empower nations and also increase them financially to prosper they had to do this by establishing economic policies that will give financial stability into countries so if you look at it critically the imf is more a solution to the great depression that came and because this thing was established since that year, you will never hear about another Great Depression, either in Europe or America. But you keep having depression in Africa, depression in Middle East, depression in Asia. So you realize that since IMF came into existence, Africans have been suffering consistently while the Europeans are going nowhere. The, the Europeans are not suffering, the Americans are not suffering. So IMF, to me, is an agenda put together to transfer the shock of Europe and America to African countries and lesser continents. And that is the reason why for many years, the first country that ever took loan from IMA was France, when it was established in 1944. Now, go and check the loan rate that IMF gives to European countries and America, the percentage, and check the percentage rate that they give loan to African countries. It will tell you that they have carried their burdens that is Europe and America, and transfer it to African countries. If they are giving 1,000 euro to France for an interest rate of 1%, they are giving to an African country to an interest rate of 9%. That tells you that the burden of Europe and America is transferred to Africa. Now, why did the price of fuel increase? Because Cameroon, if you look at it, all the prices of fuel in different African countries is not the same. The rice is not the same in Gabon. The rice is not the same in Rwanda. Rice, in Cameroon particularly, Cameroon is bargaining for another loan. And that's the reason why they had to press them to increase the prices of fuel so that when they collect this loan, they'll be able to meet up with the demand in the nearby future. Now, Congo does not have this price hike in fuel as Cameroon has. That's because Congo is not bargaining for what Cameroon is bargaining. This fuel increase in different countries is as a result of the bargain. In Central African Republic, a liter of gas is 1,450. Ours is 1,720. That is to let you understand that the prices are not the same. That's because Africa, South, Central African Republic is not a petroleum producing country. You go to Nigeria, Nigeria's fuel prices rose from 145 to 350 per liter. That is to let you understand that Nigeria falls under OPEC organization of petroleum exporting countries so they have the capacity to process fuel in their country according to the rules guiding cameroon cameroon has the opportunity to process only 20 percent of its fuel not because it does not have a refinery it says 80 percent as crude when the crude is being processed and sold back to us it sells 10 times on the price we sold why don't they give us the opportunity to process our own fuel only 20 percent the sonara you saw there in lima which got burnt was having the opportunity to process only 20 percent of cameroon fuel now there is something called credit letters these credit letters are being given by countries to secure them in the world market so that they can be able to collect fuel on credit but now it comes a time where these credit letters could not longer produce because ours was totally finished. We had no credit letters, so France had to step in. Now, to make matters worse, uh, uh, Luis, Cameroon is under the Eurozone. Euro is under the dollar zone. 
every time i repeat every time that they devalue euro it falls back on the currencies that are under the eurozone so euro has been devalued recently and that's the reason why before this currencies of cameroon and cfa was changed i announced it i'm sure on a program on this platform i said they are going to change the notes and very soon they will devalue that money mm -hmm. how do you know it is devalued if you take ten thousands of the previous note and ten thousand of this note in terms of size yeah. it has devalued because the other one was bigger than this one so lesser material is used to produce this that formal loan you could take one thousand francs and buy a fiscal stamp but you use one thousand five hundred francs now to buy the same stamp that formal note you and i could buy a liter of petrol for 630 mm -hmm. that we are buying a liter for 730. it lets you understand that the value of the money has gone down and it's not because cfa got devalued it's because euro got devalued and it was transferred upon the african continent so if we don't understand the manipulation we are going to stand and begin to blame where will i blame the government of cameroon i will blame them because we allow politicians to handle economic matters the people who handle matters concerning the increment of price are put in the parliament. They voted that bill and accepted it. Why did they accept it? Because they don't understand how things operate. The reason why we are suffering in Cameroon is because we have square pegs in round holes and round pegs in square holes. People are not given the ability based on their skill and talent to manage certain things. Go to a, the, 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 the West Africa. You discover that when it came for the time to negotiate on the ECO, because France came and wanted to drag ECO under Eurozone. But you see, the central bank governor of Nigeria, Ghana, Gambia, Sierra Leone, and other countries, and their final ministers were the person that those nations sent mm -hmm. to go and represent them. When they sat down on the table and discussed with these European and American agents, they realized that the bargain was too cheap. They wanted the ECO to be an independent currency that can compete with other currencies in the market. But France and other European powers wanted to drag the ECO under the Eurozone. But because the people who went there to sit to bargain on this deal were central bank governors who have a proper understanding and professional skill concerning finance, they refused it. That's why you see ECO has not gone into existence today. Now, France wanted to use Alassane Draman Ouattara, who happens to be the chairman of Waemu, West African Economic Monetary Union, in order to pass and bring the ECO under the, French, the Eurozone. Those other central bank governors who understand how things operate refused. Now, who are the persons who go and sit on behalf of Cameroon to bargain on issues concerning currency, concerning management of resources? This is where the challenge is. Yeah, you just mentioned the aspect of uh, the IMF giving out loans in, at, with higher interest rates to African countries. But we have uh, banks like the African Development Bank in Africa. But why are African countries skipping this bank to go to the IMF? Is it that there's not much money uh, at the African Development Bank? Or why should we say it's the reason why we see Africans still heading to get loans at higher interest rates? You see, this thing is very political. It's political because... A, a, a bank like African Development Bank, if you take a loan on it and you play with it, they will deal with you. Yeah. There was a time about the COVID gate in Cameroon where I have loaned money to Cameroon to manage the COVID-19 situation. Mm -hmm. That money was embezzled. The IMF was aware and sent people to come and investigate. Only for them to investigate to find out that that money was in the hands of some bottlenecks and some people who embezzled it. The IMF, instead of sanctioning those individuals, instead doubled the loan. How do you explain that I borrow Louis money? I am aware that Louis has mismanaged that money. Because the bad thing is we don't borrow to invest. We don't yeah. borrow to, to develop. We borrow to consume. That's, what, that's how dangerous it is. Borrowing in a context is not wrong. Yeah. But it's the outcome of the borrowing that makes the borrowing wrong. So that a nation borrows is not a crime. But what do you do with the money that is money borrowed? Yeah. How can IMF borrow money to Cameroon government and then Cameroon government does not have any accountability on the COVID-19 stuff and then suddenly IMF is still borrowing money again to an already an already indebted country? It tells you that they have an agenda because there is a scripture and I hold on to that scripture. It is as true as life. Yeah. It says the rich rule over the poor and the borrower is a slave to the lender. What does that mean? It tells you modern day slavery is not carrying us in ship anymore to go and work in plantain cocoa and other plantations in europe and south america the modern day slavery is to constantly make us borrowers so that we remain students to them forever 
So now that they have realized that the money borrowed here was not properly used, they instead came and added. Now, talking about African banks, Africa has so many banks that could be of help. But you see, those banks, they can't borrow them because the procedures that are put in place, we implicate them. So this International Monetary Fund, they are flexible. They give you access to the money and then they turn around to manipulate you. That's the reason why China did not come to Africa with the way Europeans came to come and sign treaties. Because why all the petrol, the bauxite, the gold, the manganese were signed by African countries before they got independence. So China does not have access to those things. China has come with a device of loan because loan is the modern day slavery. When they loan you, they trap you and keep you under control. That's why China has seized the port of Djibouti and turned it to a military base. So you go around, you discover. Now come back, we have different banks in Africa. We have Bidiak. Mm -hmm. It's not Biak. Mm -hmm. Bank de Development de l'État de l'Afrique Centrale. This bank is in uh, Congo Democratic Brazzaville. It was founded by President Obiangi Mabasoka, President Pobia, Libongo, and the rest. This bank was meant to save money that will be helped to develop certain sectors of countries in Semak. This is not Bayak. Mm -hmm. Now, Bayak, Bidiak is there, but Cameroon does not survive in the midst of that Bidiak. We have Bayak now, which is Bank of Latin Africa Center. That's a French instituted property. Mm -hmm. We have the Atijari Wafa book group of banks in Morocco. This is a bank that has money to sponsor projects. Africans don't take money there. We have Afrixim, which is an African import and export bank. That bank also is there to help people. Then talk less of the African Development Bank also, which is held by Akin Wumia Desinia, who happens to be a Nigerian. He's an economist from Ohio University, Columbus. That man has managed that bank for many years, and he was re-elected again as a director. To let you understand that we have all these banks around us in Africa, yet there are people who will never take money from those banks. Because the banks, the IMF and the World Bank are a permanent trap that has kept the continent Africa in bondage. So you will realize that the borrowing of money from these banks is not because they actually want to help. It's because they want to cage you and keep you under control. A World Bank expert, loan expert, was asked once because they go around the world looking for those who will take loans. They ask him, they say, where do you face difficulties? He said, my greatest difficulty in getting customers is in Asia and Middle East. Asian countries don't go in again for banks. Mm -hmm. He said, but when he's sent to Africa, it becomes easier for him. As a matter of fact, Africans prepare a table for him to eat, and they beg him to take the loan on their condition. They go to the loan table as even beggars. So it makes us remain into captivity. That's the reason why you see... This so-called increment in basic commodities, increment in this, increment in this, is because of indebtedness. And we have to catch up to pay those debts. They should not hide under the banner of Ukraine and, uh, and uh, uh, Russia crisis. Before they increase the withdrawal of f mobile money that you pay 200, was there any Ukraine war? When we increase the price of other basic commodities in Cameroon, did they have any Ukraine war? So the Ukraine war is just a shadow cover to hide the real thing that is eating this nation. It's indebtedness. They are trying to recover money and pay the debt they have borrowed for so many years. As a matter of fact, the debt we are owing this nation, generations unborn will come and still be paying those debts. It's not Ukraine and Russia crisis. What has Ukraine taken from us? So we actually looking at uh, just like you earlier mentioned, the price of fuel goes up to add to the already existing. Uh, other basic, basic commodities. commodities in the country. Now, uh, we look at the living standards of Cameroonians. It's already unpleasant. Many <laughs> say Cameroonians live on less than one dollar. Of uh, course, uh, of day. course. And now we, we have a poor price increase. Uh, basic commodities equally, the price have gone up. And government says it is increasing 5.2 percent on the civil servant salary uh, <laughs> to help compensate or mitigate the the effect of this increase in fuel price. Do you think this is what you know, commend you. see, they used to say in order to pacify a group of people, sometimes it's to reduce the temperature of the heat. Mm -hmm. That thing they did there by adding 5.2% for the salary of civil servants mm -hmm. is pacifying. As a matter of fact, they are biting you and blowing it. Mm -hmm. Bite and blow. They did not just want to come and say they have increased the price of fuel. Because if they did that, it would have probably sparked up some revolution or some movement. But they see they have now coined it in a very nice way. 
Luis, to begin with, Cameroon government has the capacity to employ only 350,000 Cameroonians in a population of 26 million people. It's not even up to a tenth, which is 2.6 million. Now, increasing the salary of civil servants for, by 5%, you have increased 350,000 people. Therefore, you are increasing all Cameroonians are using. You are 26 million people are using fuel, and you are increasing the salary of 350,000 people. How does that fit? It's like you are collecting a, a, a spoon of water out of an ocean. It makes no sense. That's the first thing. Minimum wage goes on from 36,000 to 41,000, an additional 5,000. How many people are working in Cameroon? Because we have the private sector and we even have the the, 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 the public service, uh, public servant, and the civil servant. How many persons are working in this country? And what measures were put in place that that house girl who is working in that house, they were paying her 35,000. Now that they have increased minimum wage to 5,000, who is there to make sure that if the boss does not pay, the girl will, be, will, will receive the money? There are no measures put in place because we're supposed to put measures that, okay, we're going to set up. A, in under the Ministry of Labor units in different regions of the country and certain offices that when you are not giving that additional money for minimum wage, mm -hmm. you can go there and report your boss, your company, or anywhere. That security man that earns for the 5,000, if they don't increase the 5,000 to make it 50, who will be there to make sure that they pay the money? No measures were put in place to make sure that the minimum wage rises from 36,000 to 41,000. Mm -hmm. So it is weak. Number two, Civil servants in this country are not up to 10% of the population. So if at all, let's add 55.2% 5, to all civil servants. How does that solve the problem? Fuel has risen from 700, um, from 575 to 720. Take the percentage that increase in fuel and divide it with that of what that has increased in their salary. What increase in fuel is more than 10%. Because from 720 to, to from 620, from, to, 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 from 630 to 730 is 100. Yeah. Is 100. Yeah. That's almost about 10% or plus of the amount of money. Yeah. Because 10% of 630 is 63. Yeah. It's 63. Yeah. Now it has increased to 730, which means more than 100. So you increase salaries by 5%. And increase the product by ten percent. What have you added? It's a, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's, 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 it has nothing. So they are just putting that thing there just to deceive people. That's something you must understand. And you highlighted that the government is able to employ just three hundred and fifty. Three hundred and fifty Cameroonians in a population of twenty-six million. Yes. So, <laughs> when, if we actually take this into consideration as well. What happens to, to the five to twenty-five million six hundred and fifty thousand people? Now, fuel is to humanity as oxygen is to humans. Mm -hmm. Oxygen makes every other part of the body functions. Mm -hmm. For instance, the lungs, the liver, the intestines, the heart, they flow by oxygen. Fuel is that commodity in the society that affects almost every area. Now we're, if we're well at, increases, yeah, yeah. Yeah. we're looking at how the impact of this increase. The impact of the increase in the community, in the, in the, in the, because they will tell you that we increase the prices of visit technique. Let me put it in French: road body yeah. certificate, yeah. visit technique. Because car owners seem to be living a better life. You fail to understand that those car owners also some of their transport drivers. Yeah. When you increase the prices of roadworthy certificates to a bus driver know that the transport from here to town will no longer be 250 it's going to be 300 mm -hmm. it has fallen upon the individual who is not a car owner indirectly taxes are paid either directly or indirectly so if you increase the taxes directly on the transporter it is indirectly increasing on the passengers that's the effect now those who also transport commodities goods and foodstuffs from one region to another the prices of those goods will increase he that goes now to the market to buy products will not buy again at the market because why the amount of money that was used to transport the products to come here has equally landed on the good itself so he that comes to buy is affected so last was a fuel is to the economy the same way oxygen is to the body so almost everybody in one way or another is trapped in this dilemma that's the impact yeah. and the agricultural sector we understand that most goods live from 
uh, rural areas, areas are to come, yes, yes, to come to urban areas. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. what would this mean to the price of food? The, well? It would definitely increase what I'm trying to point out mm -hmm. because nobody will go to Munyenge to transport, transport bonds of plantain. Yeah. They used to pay a bond, for instance, 300. Mm -hmm. This time around, you are paying the bond for 350. Mm -hmm. Now, if the bond is 350, you come to Dwala, you will not sell as you used to sell in the past. And even, you even, want to even, increase. Yeah, and some people eat only. as well. <laughs> There's a list of what we could eat. That's the list we are talking about. Yeah. And it, what is so dangerous is that some people also take advantage of the situation because right now, somewhere around up, they are selling a bottle of gas, domestic gas, mm -hmm. for 10000 But you know, the government did not increase the price of gas. They did not. Yeah. They didn't increase the price of kerosene. But some stations will sell kerosene for 400 per liter. A, a, a liter of kerosene is 350 but some station will say the price has increased so mm -hmm. people the also take advantage transportation yes. transporting the the, 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 the to, 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 <laughs> to those areas obviously now let me tell you something Luis the issue is that uh, when such things come up from time to time eh, mm -hmm. people take advantage over it for instance this new currency that came out and power printed counterfeit out of it before you want to understand the real currency, you must have been using counterfeit and you are trapped. Yeah. It's the same thing that the government has not increased the price of domestic gas, but people are still increasing it. In Bamenda, a bottle of gas is 8,000. Under normal circumstances, a bottle of gas is 6,500. 6, yeah. The government did not increase. So you discover that scams and other manipulations come into the picture when things are not properly handled. Mm -hmm. Who are to be blamed or who is to blame? Who is to blame? Who is to blame in this situation? You blame the person that increased the commodities. That is the issue. So when we talk about this thing about Ukraine crisis here and then, no, it's debt. It's debt. And whenever these debts are collected like this, the bad thing is that these debts are not judiciously used yeah. for the betterment of the country. Because if this thing was fully invested, nobody collects a loan and invests fully and does not pay back that loan. We don't need to increase price of basic commodities to pay loans. If at all we judiciously use those loans, the loans would have been strong enough to produce interest that would pay themselves back. And are there any lessons? Why should are I rob it on people? Eh? Are there any lessons being learned by uh, those who manage these issues? Are, are they, you know, are they, do they listen and are they learning any lessons from the challenges? Considering that we are still, the IMF is still giving out loans to Cameroon, but these loans are not used or not being invested to. You know, produce uh, uh, profits that can be reinvested. So, why are we not learning from the mistakes? We this make? nation is like elephant meat. Everybody that climbs in a place of opportunity exploits his and goes, thinking that the next generation will mm. come to pay. There's nobody learning anything there because if I thought they were learning, yeah. they would have known by now that the persons in this country, like the minister, former minister of defense whose properties will be seized, 53 buildings, mm -hmm. cars in their numbers, and other properties, and then a whooping sum of 23.9 billion yeah. was charged against him for increasing the prices of I mean, um, uh, 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 products under his ministry. Mm -hmm. How do you explain that somebody steals 23 billion liquid cash with 53 buildings, and then there are Cameroonians who don't even have a room to shelter themselves. If somebody has 53 buildings. Building. It's to let you understand that we don't lack money, we don't lack resources, we lack managers of resources. Mm -hmm. And individuals who are there are so much interested in their entire well-being that they don't bother what happens in the next generation. I think we should get out of the mentality of prosperity. That's P-R-O-S, P-E. R I T Y and start thinking of posterity. P O S T E R I T Y. Prosperity is accumulating what you can enjoy. Posterity is thinking about the next generation. If we don't have the concept of posterity in this nation and we keep holding on on personal prosperity, we are going to sink the nation, suck it dry, and foster the next generation. Mind you that when you die tomorrow after embezzling all that amount of money, mm -hmm. your children's children will come up tomorrow to face the harsh economy that you left behind as an ancestor. I think it's time for us to search our consciences in this country and start thinking of what we can leave as a legacy behind. All right. Uh, we have this comment on our Facebook page. It's coming from uh, Michael Mesomo. He says, when I look at uh, 2023 public investment budget, I understand that we will not get out of it. If uh, it is uh, that uh, I understand that we will not get out of it if we continue in this process because it leads us straight to the war. 
which means that uh, Cameroonians will definitely will they cope. <laughs> Cameroonians will cope. Will cope because when you push somebody to the wall, mm -hmm. and they used to say when a man is drowning in the middle of an ocean, even the tail of a crocodile becomes the last hope to survive. Yeah. Cameroonians have been pushed, somebody said Cameroonians have been pushed to the wall. We have gone beyond the wall. And if at all we've been pushed to that wall to that extent, we are not dead, we're not going to die again. We've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly in this country. There's nothing yet to see again. Where we find ourselves in this country right now is enough to sink this nation. But you see, if we are still standing, it tells us that we can weather the storm. Now, if at all at this level where things have deteriorated to this level, we are able to stand and still be breathing. It tells that this nation is super rich to the extent that upon all the mismanagement of resources, individuals are able to still bite a loaf of bread a day. Yeah. That's it. And if we don't get an understanding on how things operate here, we're going to keep on suffering. I want to challenge Cameroonians to understand that we don't have a government you can rely on. You have to start thinking out of the box. If you start thinking around the government, you will fail. I was called to give a, an academic discourse in one university on the aggression ceremony. I, I spoke during the matriculation. I was called upon again. I said to them, one, if at all, as a graduate, your market or your targeted market is the government in this country that you have targeted the wrong market you are a failure big time you have to think of start using your potential creating your abilities on how to see to better your life because to be sincere it's time for us to start thinking beyond the four walls of a government office, beyond concours and mandates here and there, and start thinking of abilities in us that can not only benefit Cameroonians, other countries out of the world can also yearn for it. For the civil service, you can render services only to Cameroon. For the civil service, you can render services only to your community. But when you develop your potential, your skill, your ability, you serve the world. That's why you can sit here in Cameroon and invite Whiskey. You can invite Prosper Chimana mm -hmm. because they are using their ability and their potential. But if you are working as a cadre in the Ministry of Social Welfare, you end within the circle of the nation. So I think any country that does not build its people to depend on their skill and potentials, that can serve beyond the borders of their country, that country will go nowhere. The idea of Every youth in Cameroon envisaging to have a matricle number in this country is the undoing of this nation. When we grow and young men are being taught to think that their primary objective after graduating is to look for a matricle number, it will help kill the country. I think we should take them out of that atmosphere of matricle number and start thinking of their abilities and their potentials. Nigerians are scattered all over the world, not because they're working in the public or the civil service. They have decided to bring out their potentials. You see, young men are doing internet skits on social media, they are making millions buying houses because if they had to rely on magical number, who would the government employ, who would they not employ? I think it is time for us to understand that if they cannot pay your your income in this nation, they should pay you in dollars. There are Cameroonians who have skills that are being paid in dollars. I work as African ambassador to a prestigious civil society in, in America. I'm not I'm not counting on, 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 on payment from here. I'll be leaving for Kenya in the month of March to go and visit three African ambassadors to book appointment with their president mm -hmm. because I have decided to leverage my potential beyond the four walls of the government. Mm -hmm. So I'm challenging Cameroonian youth to start thinking out of the box and that know that there are potentials and skills in you. For instance, you can be a good footballer, a basketballer, a rocky player, a baseballer. You can be a long tennis player. Those are skills that pay you beyond the four walls of your country. You could also go to school and come back here. It doesn't mean that you must stay only in the area of your, your economy. You could think Think beyond that four walls of your nation, and it will help you now leverage your potential. Mm -hmm. I don't need Many any university in this country to employ me. Many still believe that the government still has the responsibility to, to create that conducive atmosphere for these uh, talents to flourish and for uh, these talents to be to be sold beyond the national borders. If, if the environment is not there, if uh, uh, the concern is not there by the government, the talents and everything, you know, somehow businesses as well are crumbling because of heavy taxes from the government. Francis Ganyu did not allow government to create a conducive atmosphere before he became a U.S. champion. Well, which means that the office did not create. Let I want learn. I want to yeah. call persons who have grown because they used to say the 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 environment where somebody is borrowing is the same way somebody is a borrower. Mm -hmm. 
in that atmosphere where somebody is a lender, another person is a borrower, yeah. what is a lender doing in that atmosphere that the borrower is not doing that has made him a borrower? It's because they are under the same pressure, but somebody is thinking differently. I want to call you a series of Cameroonians that did not allow government to create a conditional atmosphere, even though it is a government responsibility to create a conditional atmosphere. Now, if you find yourself in a place where everybody in the system is one one greedy person who is self-centered and is not bothered how the atmosphere is created. Mm -hmm. Will you die with your potential and your skill because individuals are to make a conducive atmosphere? No. You have to start looking of a possibility, possible way to navigate your way in such a society and survive. I have been on television. I'm talking. People consult me from other countries of the world and I leave them a potential there. If the Cameroon government does not want to use what I have, people are using it outside mm -hmm. and it's beneficial to me. Mm -hmm. Was I waiting for the government to call me, appoint me a senator, parliamentarian, which I know I have that capacity and I have the stability to stand in such offices in the country? Why not be a presidential office? I can do it in this country. Mm -hmm. But the issue is the atmosphere has not been created because why? Certain individuals has held, they have held the nation under ransom. Mm -hmm. They have held the nation at ransom. They have kept the nation under hostage. So I will allow my potential economic and political skill in me to die because individuals have not created the opportunity. No, it is under the same government that I sat there and I was made director of arbitration and complaint at the Kwame Krumah Ayoluka Institute in Ghana. It's under the same atmosphere I was made the African ambassador to the civil society in the United States of America. It's under the same atmosphere I've been called by the University of Tanzania, the University of Nairobi and Cape Coast in Ghana for using my videos to teach political science in their classes. I did in, 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 their, in, in their schools. I did not go about looking for government. That's what I'm trying to make people understand. Mm -hmm. Now, it offers rose in this country. You must understand that Cameroon is one country that they only identify with what you have shined. It wasn't the government that sponsored it to go and play football in Spain. But when it became popular, they looked for him. Nganyu has been given honor in this country. Government didn't even know I had that he parked the two the desert before yeah. going to France. Yeah. So I think I'm challenging every youth listening to me right now that bring out your skill and your potential. If the government of the nation cannot pay for it, other countries will value and pay for it. Mm. That's, that's, that's what I'm talking about. So build yourself as an individual. All right. Why uh, the message is being sent across and hoping that the youths are listening. We equally, uh, you know, talk again about this, the foil increase in, in Cameroon. M many hold the opinion that the crisis, uh, if not that of Ukraine, but the one which Cameroon has been facing six years now, the uh, crisis in the two English speaking regions, many say it's equally draining the government of, of course. a lot of uh, finances. And uh, how do you think this has to do with uh, the present, you know, economic hardship which Cameroon is facing. Uh, the, 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 the crisis in Nova has played a very pivotal role. Mm. You and I know very well that Cameroon had to increase its debt because of one, the crisis in the North and the South, and secondly, the COVID-19 situation. Mm -hmm. That was what pushed us to enter into more loans, yeah. borrowing of more money. And now the the crisis in the North and South has drained government, mm -hmm. keeping those military up there and all those machines that are running up and down every day with forces, with guns and bullets here and there, burying military proof and also other activities, destruction of government vehicles, and they have to replace those vehicles that are being bombed and destroyed. Mm -hmm. It's costing huge amounts of billions. Yeah. Now, Cameroon has crisis in this Cameroon for six solid years. It didn't influence the increase in the price of basic commodities and fuel. Then a crisis occurred in Ukraine that has not been up to a year. It causes, are you not understanding the drama in it? Mm -hmm. How can a crisis in Ukraine that has not been up to one year increase the price of commodity in Cameroon? Why could have had a war here for six years? Yeah. How much money is Cameroon investing in Ukraine crisis as compared to the amount of money they are investing in Northwest and Southwest? How many persons do they lose in a crisis like the one they are losing here? How much property have they lost in Ukraine like the one they are losing here? So how do you correlate the fact that a crisis in Ukraine we are investing nothing in is causing us to become poorer in the crisis here when we are investing everything? Mm -hmm. That thing should be told to kindergarten children, not those who have come of age. So, uh, Apostam, we, we understand we have a government that... Uh you know, I don't know if it's the other man to change, or do we think uh, it's the leadership which is not, you know, uh, doing its job? Who is not doing the job here? Uh, Mr. B. on his part, many believe he's been doing uh, his job in trying to ensure that those who embezzle state money, 
uh, sent to jail, just like uh, the one you just mentioned, the former uh, Minister Argument. of Defense, who was sentenced recently to 30 years imprisonment alongside uh, his accomplices. Now, when we look at situations like that and we see, see uh, this kind of happenings, who do we blame here? Cameroonians themselves for not, you know, being accountable, or do we blame, you know, Mr. Bia for not, you know, doing much in, you know, making sure that things happen rightly? You see, Mr. Bia is not the government. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bia is an individual. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we cannot blame Mr. Bia completely, even though he has some portion of the blame. Yeah. We cannot blame him completely because he is not entirely the government. Mm -hmm. For instance, the 23 point something billion stolen by the former Minister of Defense, is it Mr. Bia who stole it? Yeah. It's not Bia who stole it. Now, do you know how much that money would have saved the community? And all the other persons, the Minister of Energy who once collected his own portion was sent to prison. Mm -hmm. Now, talk colors of the Ababa Polika and the Undongdongs and the, the rest who stole the amount of money. Mm -hmm. If those finances, which those people stole, were judiciously used in this country, would have helped the economy. So you cannot say it's a beer, because he has given them access to money to use the money and better the country. Mm -hmm. The people collected the money and then they wasted it. So we cannot heap. They used to say, uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. That is the truth. They will blame Mr. Bia for that. But he has gone to the extent of arresting them. Arresting them and they cannot cover the money. And what do you do? Yeah. Will you kill or will you do what because they cannot get the money? Somebody steals 23.9 billion and is sent to 30 years imprisonment. How does that recover the money? His prison term does not bring back the money. Mm -hmm. So what we are talking here is the recovery of this money because we, can, we need this money to settle things in the country. That just to let you understand, when the videos were taken around the former minister of defense's house, who went, who, who, whose wife almost burned some of yeah. these euro notes there, is to let you understand that Cameroon does not lack money. Money is in the hands of few individuals who are very wicked, greedy, self-centered, egocentric, and heartless, who have refused the well-being of the next generation because of their self-aggrandizement. How do you explain that a minister's wife will want to burn money when there is a pauper, there is a hungry man there around Belabu, there is a child there in Mayo Danai, Mayo Kani, Faru Ediu, Diamare, there are children here around Etam, some Indonga Mantung, who do not have shelter over their head, but the minister's wife is igniting a flame to burn down currency because they don't want to be caught. It tells you that the nation does not lack money. We just yeah. have a group of greedy, self-centered, egocentric, and wicked individuals who have decided to trade the destiny of the next generation. We have the crisis in the northwest and southwest regions, which is still ongoing. Yes. Uh, the government, Mr. B, has not been able to completely manage the aspect of investment in the country. What else, what steps do you think can be taken to better, you know, arrest this situation? And this, uh, you know, what we, the country is facing right now? You see, uh, Luis, this is 40 years. Yeah. They used to say when something is done once, it's an accident. When it is done twice, it's a coincidence. When it's done a third time, it's a program. For 40 years, President Povia has ruled this country. And the problems he met for 40 years, we are still facing the same problems today. You cannot be given an exam for 40 years and you don't pass. Anybody who writes GCE five times mm -hmm. without passing has a problem. Okay. Either you have refused to pass or you have refused to study to pass. Mm. Because corruption is still at its peak, unemployment is still the order of the day, all kinds of banditism and femania. The same ministers we appointed in the past who stole, we sent those cream of ministers away, we brought new ministers, they are still stealing. What did we learn when the former ministers stole? What measures did we put in place? And then took, for example, compare and contrast within this regime and that of Aiju. I was told as a young boy that a minister was sent to prison to have embezzled 600,000 in the days of Aiju. What, we, we me in, in, in <laughs> what were the measures? Yeah. A minister in Malawi was arrested for taking, I think, $1,000 on that yeah. COVID-19 budget and was sent to prison and fired. Now, if you tell me that the president is, 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 is working, you cannot they came to our church once and stole they stole the the, the generator because certain parts of the building were not blocked immediately we saw that we realized that they passed through this 
we call for a word that he came the world that they play since then we have not had any theft again that is to let you understand that yeah, the incident that took place in yeah. the first place should have taught us how do you have ministers in all generations that are in Basel? From 1982, the Embezo, 83, Embezo, that means measures have not been put in place that when the next ministers come in, they hear the impact of what was done to the furious ministers they will be afraid of. At the level we are right now in this country, fear was supposed to have been gripping the hearts of those who occupy positions of finance because it, it should be recorded that mm -hmm. the previous persons that attempted doing this nonsense were dealt with ruthlessly. Mm -hmm. But since there's flexibility and some kind of laissez-faire, this man said, ah, this person stole now and succeeded. Mm -hmm. Let me also give him the opportunity to steal. So this is where we have a challenge. Measures are not put in place to curb situations of thief, uh, theft and, 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 and thievery. This is the reason why we have to restructure the entire system. Mm -hmm. Restructure the entire system. Okay. Um, a minister mm -hmm. stole once in the country, and when the, the president was asked, he said, proof. Yeah. Kelly proof. And... Uh, Particularly when we talk about this, uh, the hardship that's going to, uh, you know, follow the increase in the price of fuel. We talk particularly on what this is going to mean to those in the English-speaking regions, northwest and southwest regions, where uh, there's already a crisis that, you know, has caused a lot of hardship, and the hardship still continues. When you look at this present situation, just like you mentioned, that the price of uh, Cooking gas mm -hmm. uh, has gone somewhere about more than ten, seven, eight thousand, ten thousand in up. Yeah, and. Uh, can what would this mean in the long run when we, if they have to continue like that you see i used to say that there are two kinds of war taking place in cameroon mm -hmm. there is a political war which erupted the anglophone crisis there is an economic war we are fighting right now mm -hmm. this economic war does not is, it does not exist in the two regions of the country the increment of fuel is an economic war the increment of mobile money transfer is an economic war. Yeah. The increment of basic commodities is an economic war. You can think of deals and have high blood pressure. And this war we are fighting right now is even stronger than the one they are using gun because it's a war of conscience and psychology. Mm -hmm. It's a war of emotion. And not uh, no one is spared mm -hmm. from top Puseri mm -hmm. right down to Ja Elobo from the East Baturi right down to the West in Manfe, everybody is involved in the economic war. Right inside your bedroom, the war is there bombarding you. Mm. You and I know very well that it, at first things were going smoothly, but now to even get breakfast for children is not that easy. Yeah. How do you explain that you are transferring 10,000 francs from one phone to another? It's 200, the person takes and transfer to another person is another 200. That's 400. That is to let you understand the economy we are going through right now is more dangerous even than the political war that is killing people. There are individuals that will stop certain consumption of certain food because they don't have the money anymore. There are others that will be chased out of houses because they don't have the money anymore. There are others that will lose their job because companies are going to do uh, uh, some redundancy in order to be able to sustain mm -hmm. the number of workers that are there and to let you understand that this economic war is even more dangerous than the gun that we are fighting up and down. So there is a real war on ground. I'm calling Cameroonians that this war we are talking about is an economic war of base increase in the price of basic commodities. What sparked the civil war in Sudan was an economic war. So when the prices of bread commodities like sugar and the rest, it causes the Sudanese to enter into the streets. So there's an economic war we are fighting, which is more dangerous than the political war we already have at hand. And uh, we take stock of uh, this economic war, which you say we're fighting. <laughs> we look at five years from now, the government has its own plans, and what are, where are we heading to? You and I know that the vision of the head of state in 2035 is an emergence in Cameroon. Yeah. An emergence in Cameroon. How can Cameroon emerge under such circumstances? When we used to eat a loaf of bread for 500, now we now buy it for 600. Even the rack fuel that is brought from Nigeria, they call funge in quotes yeah. here, it used to be sold for 350 per liter. Now it is 600 francs per liter. That tells you that there is no freedom anywhere. If you go and buy the rock foil that comes from Nigeria, you will still use it to, 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 to you use it, it's still 600. The gap between that foil and this the one we use is 130 francs. So that is to let you understand that 
we are in a very deep mess and if this continues like this in the nearby future we may resolve into countries like Somalia we may resolve into countries like Sudan where children could not eat for themselves they became so pale on the owls and eagles flew from abroad from above and picked children like like chicks to go and eat because there was no way they could move we now see people in Yemen that have died of hunger hunger has drained water and fat out of their system they are living with skele as skeletons that is an economic war it drains the economy to the extent where even a means to feed yourself you can't go anymore so this is what we are entering into gradually we may not need to carry gun again hunger will kill you in your room you don't need to carry gun again lack of health facilities will kill you in your room you may not have you, you may not need to carry gun again the inability to even pay your rent will send you to the street you'll be exposed to diseases and all kinds of misfortunes this is why we are saying that there is a war we are fighting right now this war is not a war of gun it's a war of economic activities the question is can Cameroonians by themselves without the government you know, overcome such a situation? You see, if you look at some of the young people who pass through the Mediterranean Sea to travel abroad, mm -hmm. they used to pack at least 2,000 of them in these boats that cross them. Yeah. When those boats capsize inside the sea, everybody begins to find a way to fly, find their way to swim out of the ocean. Cameroon happens to be that boat that has capsized in the middle of the sea. It is time for you to lose your, use your life jacket, lose your chips, use whatever you have to swim your way out. That's like the way Buari has dragged the Nigerian economy onto its knees. The Nigerian economy right now is all the fittest. So I think the elder we start using our initiative on how to survive in the days ahead is going to be better. Well, it's a because sense. I think their abilities in order cannot serve only our nation. Mm -hmm. Their ability other can serve other nation. And if you are not celebrated in your country, you don't stay where you are tolerated. You mm -hmm. stay where you are celebrated. And it's a, it's it's a reality which many actually don't see it coming, but it, it, it's coming. It's a reality. Yeah. It's a reality, Luis, because you are nice from every indication. It's so amazing that you will increase price of basic commodities at the blow boom mm -hmm. uh, every of the prices will every, increase at, at, once. The, at, at the start of the no year. wisdom applied to even give gap i increase this and then give some space and then increase this gradually so that people will not feel the impact even give three three months six six months distance no in january price of visit technique increase visit vignette increase fiscal stamp, fiscal stamp increase. increase uh electricity be increased and then airport, tax airport increase. taxes increase and then now we are at the true that is increasing so it tells you that things are only getting worse i, I asked somebody two days ago i said he said he said will this country get better i said since from the time prices began increasing around 1986 mm. they were selling a bag of rice for 2500 under the Minister of Commerce, they will come and say, the Minister of Commerce has come up with this, 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 and price basic commodities, and they will give it in the air. They will, people say, oh, flour, don't flour is increasing now from 1,500 to 1,700. From that increase, arithmetically, that started around the 80s, mm -hmm. we are in a geometric increase in the price of basic commodities. When have we ever sat for once and they reduced prices in this country? It's only going to be climbing on the chart. It's going to be climbing. Well, unfortunate, but uh, that's what Cameroonians find themselves into. And if there was one message you have to pass out to give out to Cameroonians out there at this challenging time, uh, what would that be? They say when animals also have learned to hide, hunters have also learned to shoot without missing their target. Mm -hmm. The time has come for Cameroonians as individuals to start looking far beyond the four walls of this country. They should start thinking of abilities in them that can help them survive the storm. Mm -hmm. Not every Cameroonian is paid by Cameroon. Yeah. And not every Cameroonian has survived by working in Cameroon. And not every Cameroonian has become prosperous by being educated. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you begin to wonder even what is the essence of the education. 
you so much invested in in this country because at the end of the day it will be beneficial just to express yourself in a society to let men know that you once entered the force of a university or you went to a secondary high school because this day we study to be able to identify with the society and to acknowledge the fact that we went to school we are not studying anymore to work but i believe before you were created there are abilities and potential that got deposited in you look deep within you those abilities are there they may create employment and jobs for you that your government cannot give you okay. that's how i survive in this country i've never worked for the government not for once and i can only come into the place of the government the place of leadership not to work in petty jobs okay and it looks like it's going to be a survivor for the fetus in cameroon as uh, fair price rose in cameroon to about 15 percent higher from February 1, according to a communique from the government, following a renewed pressure from the International Monetary Fund for, for subsidies to uh, be cut. And this is adding to an already existing uh, price hikes on other basic commodities in Cameroon. Beginning February 1, beginning the 1st of uh, January as well, prices on other commodities as on other services as well are equally went up. How Cameroonians are going to cope at midst of these and its impact on the economy? That's what we had to look at in today's edition of the program views on the continent. Mr. Uh, Dr. Amir Valentine, uh, political and economic consultant, we want to thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Louis. It's always a joy to come educate not just Cameroonians, but Africans as a whole. Africans as a whole, Africa is watching, and thanks for being there on the program today. We do invite you to join us again tomorrow at the same time, uh, 14 hours GMT. It's going to be the Pan African debate. Another moment for us to bring to you uh, some of the issues uh, that are happening around the African continent. And I'm not forgetting uh, the Martinez Ogo, his uh, memory and his death still remains fresh in the minds of every Cameroonian, Dr. Ami Valentine. Yes, Martinez Ogo. Uh, his departure is creating waves across the entire 10 regions of the country and uh, i saw journalists came out in their numbers one of the media personalities that people have actually made public his death i don't know why this one is so special because wazizi also died mysteriously as a journalist but the echoes that went into the air as a result of Wazizi's death is not compared to what is making rounds around social media and on different TV panels across the nation as concerns the case of Martinez Zogo. But nevertheless, let me so rest in peace and my condolences to his entire family and to his entire community. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Amir Valentine. We continue to extend our condolences to the bereaved families. Why? Equally hoping that his killers and those of um, uh, Wazizi are equally brought to book. It's here we we put an end on today's program. Thanks very much for being there. Uh, more programs are yours right ahead on Africa Media. Bye bye for now.